Hello. Hey, Brendan. Hi, Brendan. Hi. It seems like only yesterday that I saw you because it was only yesterday. Yeah. And it was great to meet you. I, you know, Laura and I had a long ride back to Chicago, and obviously we talked about you a lot and things that we uh, are hoping to do to make a difference for you and with you. I mean, we'll wait for the announcement to go by. You went through an ordeal that even those of us that have seen the show and have seen on video parts of what happened. Obviously, we couldn't see the whole thing. But none of us can understand what it would be like to be in your shoes. You know, to be in this uh, impossible situation of being a really a child. At 16, you're still a child. You're not a grown man. Yeah. And to, to be going through this interrogation where you have grown men who are interrogating you for days uh, without a parent, without a lawyer, without anyone to help you. I mean, were you scared or were you just thought maybe if you just told the truth, everything would be fine? Or What was your thought process at that point? Well, I just wanted it all over with, so I said whatever they wanted to hear, you know. Most people grow up, as I did, with believing that the law enforcement are out to help us. Right? There are people you call when you yeah. need help. Did you have that same idea when you went in there? Yeah, I thought if anything I can do to help them, you know, I would. So was there a point when you were in that horrible room where you started to worry about the outcome or that you thought that these men may have been not as well-intentioned as you originally thought? Yeah, when they started saying that... Uh, that I wasn't telling the truth and that uh, that my story didn't fit the facts that they had, that's when I started getting worried. Well, there's a very good reason your story didn't fit the facts, because you didn't know the facts. Yeah. So, Brendan, you remember there was a time when the interrogators left the room for a few minutes and your mom came back into the room. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Did you? Huh? Not really. What do you mean, not really? Huh? What do you mean by that? So, was that the first time you had seen your mom since they had started interrogating you? Yeah, it is. Okay, so what was it like to see her after being alone with those interrogators for such a long time? I felt that I could be safe and I could tell her the truth, you know, that they got into my head. They got me to say whatever they wanted. One of the things about Brendan, of course, he's got disabilities, everybody knows that, but his disabilities in particular are clustered around speech, the way he speaks, the way he hears language, the way he processes words, and the way he uses his own words, right? So, you know, this is not a, a person who can sort of weave sophisticated uh, stories or, or lies or things like that. And of course, these are disabilities that are at the center of an interrogation, right? This sort of sophisticated level of conversation, talking about, you know, what could happen to him if he, if he didn't confess, because there was a threat in this case. What would happen to him if he didn't start adopting the story that was being fed to him? What was going to happen, on the other hand, if he, if he did agree to go along with the story? You know, this is a really hard situation for someone like Brendan, 16, special education student in Wisconsin public schools. A hard situation for him to navigate. He did the best he could. For as long as he could. Yeah. For as long as he could. Four times over 48 hours, these officers questioned him. And, um, yeah, this should have been a first-round knockout. Oh, my God. He, he held up uh, as long as he could. Part of the process that landed Brendan in this situation, which was his own team. Len Kaczynski. Can you tell us what that was like, I mean, being represented by this guy? Um... When I first met him, I knew that uh, he didn't have my best interest in in mind because he was always trying to get me to take a plea deal or something. So you knew right away. I mean, yeah. Brendan, that, a lot of credit to you because 
you know, mo many people might not have picked up on that so quickly because people go into that situation, they think, well, this is my lawyer. He's going to be protecting me and defending me. Um, yeah. So you knew right away. But then as things progressed, I mean, did you feel betrayed or did you feel hopeful that maybe he was going to turn it around and actually do his job? No, especially since that when I saw him on TV with Nancy Grace, you know, and he more or less told her that he believes that I'm guilty. Well, yeah, there's a lot of things wrong with that whole scenario. I mean, just you mentioned that name, Nancy Grace, and my, you know, yeah. my skin crawls. Um, and then, yeah, the fact that he went on there with her is, is horrible. And then you had this investigator who was supposed to be uh, helping you. And, yeah. And can you talk about that a little bit? What do you want to know? Well, when he was asking you to draw pictures and all these other things, and he was sort of you know, badgering you, like, Brendan, you did this. Yeah. What about this investigator? Well, at first, I thought maybe he would try to help me, you know, but then when he was trying to get me to more or less give another confession, you know, I knew right then and there that he wasn't on my side either. So basically, you had your family, and... And that was pretty much it. But they're not lawyers, and they're not investigators. They're just reg oh. just regular people, right? Yeah. How did being represented or misrepresented by Len and, and the things that he did, how did that make you feel? It made me feel betrayed and that I couldn't really trust lawyers either. But now I can't. Brendan, um, you know, one of the things I was personally so... Um, struck by was when we spoke yesterday about your dreams uh, for after you get out um, and what you want to do in the world. Do you mind sort of talking about that a little bit? I mean like uh, getting into making and playing video games? <laughs> well, yeah, and hopefully getting paid for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we. Oh, I think it was Laura that asked you if you had a superpower, what would it That's be? That's right. That's always one of my favorite questions to ask Brendan. I would want to have the power to heal illnesses and diseases all over the world. And where do you think that comes from? Like, I mean, it's a great superpower. I'd like to have it too. But of all the things, why do you think that one is the one that came to your mind? Well, I just like helping people, so I wanted to help other people in the world. I mean, look, there's a lot of people that want to help you too, and it's amazing. We talked about yesterday how many letters you get. Do you figure you've gotten letters from every state in the country by now, all 50 states? Gotta be close. Uh-huh. You know, Brendan, why don't you tell him some of the countries that people have sent you letters from? Do you remember some of the countries? Uh, Singapore, England, Ireland, uh, Iceland, South America, Canada, uh, Hawaii, New Zealand, too. Yeah, and even, even Australia, right? Yeah, Australia. It's yeah. amazing. And also some from Wisconsin, right? Yeah. That's great. So there's tens of millions of people now all over the world as you know who have watched making a murderer have learned about your story do you want to see the show when you get out are you interested i might i don't know if i can though yeah you mean it might be hard to watch yeah you know more or less because i lived it so why would i want to watch it again really understandable after everything you've been through and all the twists and turns and the freedom being sort of, you know, yanked away from you twice, really. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Well, your bags were packed, right? You're ready to go home, and then they pulled the rug out from under you. I mean, I would think that would make somebody crazy. Yeah, I was a little depressed, you know, and called my mom that night, and, you know, I was... I was upset, you know, and so she was she, you know, she thought I was going to be coming home, you know, and I was willing to give up all my stu my stuff, you know, and just walk out the doors with nothing. Right. So you were going to give it to some of the other guys in there, or either that or or just tell all the prison that they can keep it. Right. Well, you weren't going to need it anymore. Yeah. What helped you sort of get through this, Brendan, as this was all happening to you? Where did you find your strength? Uh, mostly having my family support me and have my back. Yeah. Especially your mom, right? Yeah. Today's visiting day, right? Yeah, I'll be getting a visit from my mom tonight. Mm hmm It means everything, you know, to have a family that loves and supports me no matter what, and uh, they always have my back, you know.
story who didn't really have any idea of what goes on in our justice system, but now they do. Is there anything particular that you could advise someone? Um, just keep fighting for me and uh, keep showing your love and support. And Brendan, um, thank you again for you know letting me come see you and for spending time on, on the air with us today. Um, and now I get to leave it open for you to say whatever you want as we close the show. Um, I don't know what to say. Um, I love Pokemon, and uh, my favorite Pokemon is Mew. But uh, there's a new one coming out called El Creamy that I really like. And uh, hopefully I get to see some of the more new ones coming out pretty soon. <laughs>